Shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, this is Andy from Big Mech's Workshop and Painting Studio and today I'm painting a Worldy as Rhino in the Prairie of course. It's a bit of a labour of love for me at the minute because I'm uh, working on a uh, thousand point army for a doubles tournament and uh, I'm doing it in a uh, Prairie of the course made out of Primaris, etc. Uh, so we're starting halfway through the first layer. I've done Xenophil highlights on a black base coat using the uh, Vallejo white pri uh, grey primer. And now I've just done a, starting the first few layers of the Leo Airs, sorry, the Leo Model Colors uh, off white. As you can imagine, this takes a while. Uh, if you're not using a uh, white, um, an airbrush, do use a grey for your prime because otherwise this will be an absolute nightmare. And you want a light grey, not, uh, not a dark one because obviously you're going, over, uh, going up to a white. So I'm putting. Uh, it's a slightly patchy coat actually, I'm not going all the way around it because as you know I make my vehicle dirty and look battered and bruised so this is exactly intentional so uh, I'm starting uh, with uh, off whites at the top and cold grey by the Leo's um, model colour range uh, from, uh, coming up at a 45 degree angle from the bottom, uh, getting some nice shading in there, get, uh, w getting a, a bit of a blend working from the top to the bottom. Uh, getting that colour, uh, nice and smooth coat and working um, working the two colours together to make it look like it's uh, got an actual inherent shading. Again now I'm back onto the uh, off-white again coming from a 45 degree angle from above, uh, blending them two colours together, uh, softening that grey uh, which is quite a rich grey at this point, uh, making, them, making it look more white than grey. Uh, the cool thing about the way I'm doing uh, this is you don't have to be the neatest painter in the world. You just need to get them base colours on evenly uh, and getting, them in, getting it all in the right places. So, start brushing blue now by hand. Uh, I'm going to take a couple of coats of this because uh, I'm putting it on really, really thin. And uh, that's important to do that because obviously you want that um, nice smooth coat uh, in, over all your model. Now I'm only doing this in the uh, sort of inset sections because obviously uh, priority will do is it's an off colour rather than the uh, rather than a main block. So I'm doing it in the inset sections on the Rhino just to break up that stark whiteness. Really uh, adds a lot of um, depth to the colour, make it look so cool. it makes the vehicle look a lot more interesting. I just throw it around there, make it look um, different. For the hinges, it is hammered copper. I'm using that for any of the hinges. Uh, the exhaust vents, etc. Uh, again, throw any extra colours in. It's always a good move because it just breaks the model up. You don't want single flat colours everywhere because it just looks boring. Uh, you want to put these little details in uh, now and then just to make it uh, a bit more interesting. And as you know, uh, black metal uh, by the layer for the tracks. Uh, you can't go wrong with it. Um, I'm pretty easy. I pretty much use it all. Uh, all the time for any kind of uh, metal piping or tracks and such. It's such a dark colour. It really works really well for this sort of thing. So uh, just get it slapped on there. Uh, again, obviously you want to be neat-ish. You don't need to be um, too concerned about getting it uh, uh, over some of the other areas, but you do want to be neat-ish. So the next layer is uh, Tesla Blue by um, Scale75. Uh, this is on the uh, ed uh, the edges of the uh, blue sections. Obviously, uh, it takes a, uh, does take a few layers to build up because it is quite a subtle transition. So, and the uh, paint is quite um, opaque, no translucent. I will get it right. Uh, so you do need to uh, build that layer up a little bit. Once you've got a decent um, edge highlight there, it's ne the next step is Mediterranean blue, again from the Cell 75 range. Uh, you could have used uh, Magic Blue uh, to replace the uh, Tesla uh, by um, uh, Vallejo or Alitok I suppose would work for it as well if you're using GW Rangers. And uh, this is just, it's just a case of getting that nice uh, bright highlight on the edges. And the final edge highlight on this is Sky Blue by again Scale 75 which is quite easily replaced by some of the uh, lighter uh, GW Blues. 
So, uh, one last highlight into the uh, blue sections, and that is using Fenris Grey, uh, which is a lovely blue-grey, it's a really nice uh, replacement for the white tones uh, to get into the, uh, the real hot spots of the um, vehicle. Uh, again, as I said, uh, you want the edge highlights straight, but you don't need to be go over the top with a neatness, as long as it's something like. Uh, again, this is a sort of painting style what anyone can do, and uh, all you need is just a little bit of patience. So, the next section is the windows. The windows I'm using gory red. Um, I wanted them to stand out, I want a sort of a, a demonic sort of look on the inside of a vehicle, so I went for a red light rather than the uh, uh, standard greens, uh, what you'd expect. It's, um, the way I'm theming this arm, it's an early part of uh, their, tra uh, the, uh, their turn, so it's from 5 sort of era. They're not completely gone mad, but they're well on the way. Onto the brass work, so it's uh, the low brass over the hammered copper. Uh, it's a standard sort of uh, thing. Um, you could do it with any of the uh, GW Sky Ra um, Rune Lord brass. Uh, onto, from Brass Scorpion would work just as well. Uh, any of the uh, standard tricolors work really well for the um, hinges, etc. The next colour is Brassy Brass by Vallejo, uh, which is a more of an off gold uh, rather than anything else. I'm just using it just to pick out the uh, top details of the uh, model on the uh, exhaust vents and uh, the hinges just to finish off that nice highlighted look. Again, keep these, uh, as this is uh, on the mod, uh, not actually on the armor proper, you wanna keep these a little bit more tidy than you do on the actual armor, um, just to make it look that bit neater. And finally, uh, chain mail rather than chrome for the uh, top silver highlight. Just keep it inside the, uh, the uh, brassy brass sections. You don't want it to overlay onto the uh, darker colours, because that might just that will just look really weird. So just be careful where you're putting that top highlight, uh, just to make sure it looks real. It just looks proper. So onto the uh, red again. It's now uh, gone from gory red to bloody red, uh, which I'm going for a sort of a the top right hand set, top right hand corner. So I'm uh, going up the right hand um, edge. And along the top from about two thirds across uh, just to brighten that um, light up. The next one is Fiery Orange, uh, again a Vallejo colour. Um, you could work with uh, Troll Slayers and the, uh, the Squid colours uh, for this, I'd work just as well. Um, yeah, Squid. Top. Yeah. Squig Orange and Troll Slayer Bright uh, would work really well, um, just as long as you've got a nice um, rich red on the air. I'm doing the same on the lights as well, bringing out some of the detail work. So the last one is a very, very fine layer of uh, golden yellow, uh, which is a Vallejo colour, and just to brighten that top section up onto the uh, light, just to give them that sort of subtle glow, uh, which we're going to uh, bring out more uh, at the end of the video. Now, just be careful, you don't get it too strong. If, that, if that's the case, just um, get a bit of a, a water on, a, on, a, on your brush and uh, just, to, just to spread the um, paint out a little bit. Just to make, just stops it from being too strong a uh, coat. Now, yeah, um, just throwing a bit of a varnish on just to protect the cores as it is. Uh, don't want it to scratch too much. This is a major problem with uh, airbrush work is that it chips really easily. Uh, not so much of an issue with the aerosols and paint, but it does have it does uh, is a problem with aerosol work with airbrush work. Now I've also done a highlight uh, off camera. Uh, I do apologise this um, as obviously we're struggling with exposure with it being a white vehicle. Uh, so obviously I've started putting the I've put the transfers on, and now I'm using Rhinox Hide with a bit of sponge from a, um, a from a blister pack or uh, from uh, a, a pull section of a, a fi figure case or something. I've just shredded the end of it 
and I'm throwing uh, this um, Rhinoctide in and around various areas, really scruffing the vehicle up. Um, and I'm also doing the same with a stippling brush just to get inside the areas where you can't do it with the um, sponge. And you go wherever you want. Um, hint, uh, joint areas really worked well for this sort of thing. It makes it look like it's been battered and used and abused by the uh, guys inside. And just throw it around there, make it look really scruffy. Um, and it really works well. It hides a lot of your mistakes as well, so this is why you say you don't have to be the best painter in the world to do this way. It hides a lot of your mistakes and makes it look really interesting. So there you are, that's the, um, the initial colour. Now this, the reason why I use a brown is it's a, essentially to represent a prime uh, what would go onto the top of the vehicle uh, before you start to um, before you would get to the bare metal. Now, onto the metal um, in, inside the areas where you're, um, you've scruffed up the paintwork, and use black metal. Um, keep it inside the uh, the brown. You don't want to um, go all over the edges of the brown. Uh, so get that sort of nice transition between the um, the prime and the bare metal. So you just follow the um, the natural shape of your vehicle um, and uh, bring out that, uh, that bare metal underneath the brown work. Okay, once you've uh, got a good quality uh, finish on that, chain mail next, uh, which is akin to Iron Breaker, I believe, uh, um, which is the GW version. And you just finish um, toning that silver work up a bit, adding some highlights to it, making it look that bit cooler, that bit more polished. And next, I'm adding some grime. Uh, so starting off with burnt umber. Burnt umber, of course, we uh, we love it here at Big Mix, as you know. And I'm throwing that around uh, the lower regions of the um, sides of the vehicles and around the uh, exhaust vents, where either dirt would uh, build up or the heat of the exhaust would scorch the um, paintwork. So keeping it gentle, build it up nice and steady. Next layer is going to be a black. Now you've got to be brave with this because um, obviously you're going over a white vehicle with black. Now be careful here, uh, keep it um, steady, don't go um, too vibrant with it as you're just building up that colour and make it look dirty and um, it, keeping it inside the areas of the, of the burnt umber so you're just building that up uh, to make it look scruffier so now I've thrown a bit of OSL on because, well, I felt like it really uh, so I started off with yellow uh, towards the um, near, near, near edges of the lights um, which initially seemed like a bit of an odd idea but it actually worked out really well for me so going around the lights and around the um, windows with yellow for the OSL. Again, I'm being really steady with this because obviously it stands out like a sore thumb on a white background. Uh, so just being careful. And then into the uh, yellow sections, I'm throwing some red in there just to make it um, more close to the actual colour of, uh, of the lights and the windows. Uh, so I'm throwing a um, fire red. Sorry. It is fiery orange, I'll get it right, into the, uh, the nearer edges of the yellow sections. So after that I've done some uh, streaking grime on there and just finishing it off with uh, a bit of streaking grime and some um, a nice matte varnish to finish it off. So it's a nice quick video for you guys, I hope you liked it, uh, I hope you learned something from this sort of thing. If you want to see any more of what we've done, hit like, hit subscribe and share with your friends and I shall catch you in the next one guys. Take care and goodbye.